What's happening Artscapers? Today we're going to talk about paver design basics. Let's get into this. On a previous video, we talked about paver patterns, so we're gonna build on that to talk about paver design basics. And in this, we're gonna talk about shapes, sizes, colors, textures of pavers, and patterns to go along with them, as well as borders and inlays. But we're gonna just be scraping the surface with this, with the paver design basics for your outdoor living space or your patio. And if you have anything else that you wanna add to this throughout this video or to comment on, leave it in the comment section below or respond to everybody here. And when when it comes to the design, it is subjective. So a lot of people will disagree on certain things. Some people will agree on a lot of things, but ultimately the space that you design is really up to you in your appeal and what you're looking for. But don't be afraid to combine shapes, sizes, colors, textures. Just don't get too over carried away with this. Otherwise your space, it does become a little bit of a mess. Personally, I like clean and simple, but when it comes to doing a full outdoor living space, I do like to combine different shapes, sizes, colors, and textures in different spaces in that space. One obvious way to do this would be to distinguish the border from the actual field where the majority of the pavers are. Now, if you're very simple, very clean in terms of your aesthetic appeal, you could keep that border stone the exact same stone that is made up of the field. And if your field is a three paver mixture, you could choose the smallest size and use that as your border. But I personally prefer to use a contrasting darker color for the border when compared to the field. And that's just because if we're doing a, let's say a swimming pool, we wouldn't want our darker color to be the field. It will hold the heat from the sun a little bit longer. It'll be a little bit hotter to the touch. So we use a lighter color for that field and a darker contrasting color for that border. And then since we're on the topic of borders, there's two different types of borders that you can do. You can do a sailor course or a soldier course. The sailor course uses pavers with their short shorter sides touching one another. Now it takes a certain type of paver to do this because they need equal lengths for two of their sides to be able to achieve that sailor course. And there are certain pavers on the market that are specifically just for those sailor courses. Though they can definitely be used for the field pavers too. I just prefer to use them as my sailor course. And a sailor course is also beneficial if you're doing a walkway and you don't want the border to eat up as much as the walkway is possible. Possible. For example, if you only have three feet of walkway, you don't want to use a paver that's 12 inches for the border on each side and then have a 12 inch field because it makes the walkway feel a lot smaller than it actually is. So in that case, we would turn that paver sideways for that sailor course. And then perhaps it's only eating up about six inches on either side, which gives us a full 24 inches for the actual field of that walkway. Now, I personally prefer to lay a soldier course. And this is when the longer sides of the pavers are touching one another in the border. So you'll see in the majority of our projects that we're actually using a soldier course along that entire project, especially if it's a larger patio project, we'll opt for that soldier course to eat up a little bit more space than a sailor course actually would. And now when it comes to shape, size, color, texture, like we were saying, in that space, you can designate certain certain areas for those different types of styles. So even though I use one paver with one shape, size, color, texture in one area, I can switch it up in another area. I just need to find a way to cohesively build that space with designated spaces within. When it comes to choosing the color, Personally, I will not try to match a house. You'll always be disappointed if you try to match your house perfectly. You'll never get that 100% perfect mixture of color to match your house brick. So instead, try to contrast it. Personally, I like grays. They seem to go with everything, but it also depends on my client's taste and what they're looking for as well. I also like a color blend that has a gray tone as well as a mixture of maybe a beige. Those also appeal to me as well, especially if a client's not totally sold on having a gray space. So that's the first step. Color, what are you going to go for? Don't try to match that house, try to contrast it. Second step is the actual size of the paver. Are you a large format person or a small format person? Small format typically lends itself to a more traditional look, whereas larger format is more of a modern contemporary look. However, you also have to look at the different textures of each of those, as well as the shapes to go along with that. For example, textures, more textured surfaces tend to lean towards a more traditional look look 
whereas a smooth surface lends itself to a more contemporary modern look. So if you were to choose a smaller paver that's also smooth, you might be leaning more towards a contemporary modern look, especially if the shape of it is like a hexagon of some sort, that's definitely leaning towards that contemporary modern look. But if you combine a smooth, large format, you're definitely leaning towards a modern contemporary look. And if you choose small to medium with a texture, it's more so a traditional look in that sense. But don't be afraid to combine looks and combine textures and sizes and different shapes into a full patio. It's all about being creative and appealing to what you're looking for in your project. And finally, just touching on shapes there, like we have throughout this, basic rectangles, squares, that can range anywhere from traditional to modern, but more unique unique shapes like cobblestone will lean towards a more traditional look and then those hexagons and diamonds more modern. So once again, start with one of those aspects, whether it's shape, size, color, texture, narrow in on one that really appeals to you and then start to choose the other variables to go along with that. You'll find there will be a basic three size paver on the market that you will actually be able to choose a variety of color blends for, but also be able to choose a variety of textures to that. So that's always a good starting point. It's actually a starting point that I use with my clients as well. Joint size is also another thing to consider. If you're looking for a permeable solution, you want those joints to be wider and there are specific permeable pavers on the market. And a smaller joint won't be as permeable and you just can't get those permeable solution jointing compounds into those thinner joints. And typically nowadays you see those thinner joints with a more modern contemporary look. But in the past, I've definitely seen that with more traditional pavers. For example, pavers that were tumbled and that gives them that aged appearance, which leans more to a traditional look. Now with all this being said, you can get very creative with your designs as well as adding inlays, things like shapes or symbols or a variety of different borders throughout your project. For example, you could have your sailor or soldier course that matches the exact paver that's in the field, but between the field and the border, you could have an inlay of a contrasting different shape, size, color, paver to give an inlay to the project or add a certain symbol in the paver project somewhere. Those are just considered inlays. Another example to that is you could distinguish a sitting area with a rectangular paver pattern that doesn't match the rest of the field pavers. The problem with that is if you were ever to choose a different space in that outdoor living space to sit, it would look out of place. Just know that if you are combining different pavers in a project, you need to consider the height of those pavers. Typical height of a paver is 60 millimeters or two and three eighths of an inch. And when I say paver, that's just a paving product like slabs or pavers. But you can get pavers that are three and one eighths of an inch or 80 millimeters or all the way down to 45. So there is a variety of heights and that's gonna come into play when you're actually screeding because you'll have to screed for one product and then re-screed for an entirely different product based on the height. So that will increase the labor in that project as well as the headaches to go along with that. And then finally, touching on patterns, but we do have a full video on this. Choose a pattern that goes with the aesthetic that you're looking for. Stack bond, running bond, these are more modern contemporary looks that lend themselves to larger format pavers in my opinion. Whereas random paver patterns are applicable to a wide variety of traditional to modern spaces. But that's another factor that you also need to consider. And this is where we'll stop here, the paver design basics for your outdoor living space. I hope this has helped you in some way. Comment below any questions that you have or differing opinions on anything that I touched on, as well as what you prefer to use in your paver projects as you install them. Leave that all in the comment section below if you wanna learn more about paver design, as well as the installation of interlocking concrete pavement. There's a link in the description to the members only platform that we have. We have courses on this available there, as well as you get access to the How to Hardscape headquarters software. This is gonna help you streamline processes in your business from budgeting, estimating, and so much more to learn about that more, link is in the description below. Like this video if you found it helpful for whatever reason and subscribe to this YouTube channel for more hardscaping content like this. Thank you so much for watching.